Hello everyone, this is Dave, and today I'm going to talk about the LM386 amplifier. I have pulled up the datasheet on the LM386. You can find it at alldatasheet.com. There will be a link in the description below. Here's the equivalent schematic of what is going on inside this op amp. Now you can see the pinout of the LM386 here on the right. Pins number 1 and 8 both work together, so I'll talk about those later on in the video. So we will begin with pins number 2 and 3. These are the input pins. There's not much going on with pin number 2, it's just going straight to ground. Pin number 3 is the positive input. You will notice that the input signal goes through a volume control before it goes to pin number 3. If your input signal level is too high, then it can cause distortion or unwanted white noise. So with amplifiers, it is best to control the volume at the input. Next we have pin number 4. This is another easy one. It's the ground. So, why do we have two ground pins here? For some applications, you can wire an amplifier with an inverted input. And if you look back to the equivalent schematic of what's going on inside the LM386, you can see that the number two pin is indeed an input. It is just a negative input. We know it's an input because it goes directly to the base of the internal transistor. If you don't know much about transistors, generally, the base is the input and the collector is the output, and also the power supply, while the emitter is the ground. All of the transistors at the bottom of the schematic have their emitters going straight to this ground pin at number 4, so pin number 4 is just a regular overall ground for the circuit. You cannot use it as a negative input like you can with pin number 2. On to pin number 5. On the pinout it is labeled as V out for voltage out. This is where the output signal comes out of the amp. We see a resistor and two capacitors. The larger capacitor is a 250 UF. The output of this amp has some DC bias that this capacitor filters out before it gets to the speaker. Because DC bias is not good for the speaker. Now let's take a look at the resistor and capacitor going to ground. When you put a capacitor from the output to ground, it redirects some of the higher frequencies to ground so that they don't go through to the output. This schematic uses a 0.05 UF capacitor here, which is the equivalent of a 50 NF capacitor. If you did not have the resistor here, or if you had too large of a capacitor, then the capacitor would filter out too much of the high frequencies, and the sound quality would not be as good. Pin number 6 is another simple one. It is marked with VS, which means voltage supply, and that's exactly what it is. This is where you connect the power source. Next we have pin number 7. On the pinout it is labeled as bypass. This bypass pin is here to help reduce noise at the input. If you look at these schematics on this datasheet, you can see that some of these circuits use the number 7 pin with a capacitor to ground. So if you are having noise issues with this amplifier, then you might try putting a capacitor from pin 7 to ground and see how it affects the circuit. Now that we have talked about pins 2 through 7, let's take a look at pins 1 and 8. These are both gain pins. You can plug in a 10UF capacitor directly across from pin 1 to pin 8 to get more gain. If you are using an electrolytic capacitor, then you need to make sure the positive leg of the capacitor is connected to pin 1 and the negative leg is connected to pin 8. The internal base gain of this amplifier is set at 20. If you plug a 10UF capacitor into the 1 and 8 pins, the gain goes up to 200. The reason you need a 10UF capacitor here is that the capacitor needs to be large enough to couple the internal 1.35K resistor between the two gain pins as shown in the equivalent schematic. In my experience, if you just plug a 10UF capacitor into these two pins, you will get distortion when the amplifier is at full volume. This could be desirable if you are using this as a mini guitar amp. But if you are wanting to use this to play music from a phone or other audio device, then you will not want this distortion. The schematic on the datasheet shows that you can put a 1.2K resistor in series with the 10UF capacitor between pins 1 and 8. This will bring the gain down to 50, but the distortion should go away. In my video, How to Add Volume and Gain Controls to the LM386 Amplifier, I used a 5K potentiometer as a variable resistor in place of this 1.2K resistor so that I can control the amount of gain with a knob. Now a 5K potentiometer is at least twice as big as what is needed here. 
I would normally use a 2K potentiometer here, but I didn't have any of those on hand when I made the video. So using a 2K potentiometer here in place of a fixed resistor will give you control over the full range of gain that this circuit is capable of producing from 20 to 200. And this is the way I prefer to wire this circuit so that I can use this amplifier as either a small practice guitar amp, similar to one of these little honey tone amps, or I can just turn the gain down just a little bit and use it to amplify music from my phone. I also used to make lunchbox amplifiers with this circuit, and that is a project we may have to do in another video. But for now, that is all I have to say about the LM386 amplifier. I hope this video gives you a better understanding of this circuit and the role each part plays in its operation. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, and if you would like to see more videos like this, then please subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching. Thank <laughs> you.